Sod phase four preview, season of discovery. I'm freaking the fuck out. Oh, okay, upvotes, downvotes, looking good right now, at least. All right, what's it gonna be? Hi, everyone. I'm Clay Stone, Associate Production Director of WoW Classic. Okay. Welcome to our Season of Discovery Phase 4 preview. It is time. At mm. long last, we're raising the level cap to 60 and jumping into the endgame. For those of you who have been playing since launch, thank you for going on this journey with us. And to those of you just jumping in, now that the full level up experience is available, you've picked a great time to join us. I also want to give a massive shout out to everyone who has hopped into our first ever Season of Discovery PTR to mm. help us test and tune all of the changes and additions coming to classes. Your feedback okay. has been invaluable in helping us prepare for what's ahead. That said, okay. even though the PTR was focused on classes, we know many of our eagle-eyed players saw hints at the content changes we're making to Endgame. And it's time for us to talk about some of those today. So oh, wow. let's take a look at what we'll be covering. We'll kick things off with content at 60, then jump into raid information, followed by some important itemization updates, okay. then dive into world event updates, as well as some system updates and more, which you're definitely gonna- Okay, as we are reacting to this, do you guys want me to be over the top positive, over the top negative, or just completely, totally honest? It is what it is. It is what it is, positive or negative. It is what it is. Just be honest. Okay, maybe honest is going to sound a little bit more negative. Let's go. I want to stick around for. All right. So whether you're already familiar with classic era content, or you're experiencing it for the first time with Season of Discovery, or you just want a refresher, raising the level cap to 60 brings with it a ton of new content and things to do, including access to all WoW classic zones like uh -huh. the Burning Steps, Eastern okay. and Western Plaguelands, Silithus, and Winterspring. You'll Not also be able to finally max out your character talents. Not In addition, new the Aldrich Valley Battleground will Not also new be unlocked. Content. Epic mounts will be available Not new to content. collect. And more. Also, Who the fuck knows? all of the classic... Okay. So, so far, no new content. ...dungeons will now be available, including Scalamance, Strathholm, all three wings of Dire Maul, and Blackrock Spire. And because the bosses have stopped spending their time in phase three socializing in the Grim Guzzler Tavern, the second half of the massive Blackrock Depths dungeon. Not new content. In addition, there just might be one okay. more dungeon surprise we're not gonna talk about today, but we're excited for players to discuss. One more dungeon surprise. Okay, so as he says that, they are showing this little grotto. This is where Manoroth got killed by Grom Hellscream with the help of Thrall back in Warcraft 3. We all know that. This is the place in southeastern Ashenvale. I would guess that they turn this little area into an outdoor dungeon. They put an instance on the entrance and you zone in. I think we're getting a new dungeon. This has got to be a new dungeon. In addition, they're just my... And, it, and you know it's going to be like demon shit. Okay, what is this? This is the spirit of Grom Hellscream. He has Gore Howl in his hand. This is the demonic spirit of Grom Hellscream right there. So we're probably going to have to fight him in ghost form or some shit. Might be one more dungeon surprise. We're not going to. Just want to try to. More dungeons. Okay, you have a shredder in the background. And the shredder is working on the tree. You have a fell guard with two fell hunters over surprise, there. Surprise, we're not going to. You have a big ass uh, like ghost fail guard, and this is the shattered uh, glaive of Manoroth. Talk about today, but we're excited yep. for anything else. Uh, nothing crazy players here. Players to discover. Switching okay. gears to a quick note okay, about Okay, new runes. dungeon. Since we've had the PTR up for the past few weeks, that explains Broxgar's axe. Um, yeah, it yeah it could maybe maybe Broxgar's axe it has something to do with this new dungeon. Yeah, it could be today but we're excited for players to discover. Switching gears to a quick note about runes. Since we've had the PTR up for the past few weeks, none of the runes are a complete secret. So we aren't gonna be spending a lot of time in this presentation talking about runes or classes. However, we will be posting a rundown of new runes and class adjustments separately from this video. So please check the official World of Warcraft forums for that. Moving on to raids. As we previously announced, the Molten Core raid will be scaled down to 20 players and will contain adjustments okay. to the boss encounters across the 11 bosses for you to take on. Just gonna oh, leave wow. that there. We are very excited for everyone to hop in wow. and get their hands on the brand new revamped tier one sets. 
that okay. now have multiple variants for different specializations and play styles that each class has access to. That's crazy. Tier sets aren't the only place we've made. This is a big fucking mistake. 20 man raids, big fucking mistake. These raids, molten, listen, I think it is actually like sacrilegious. It is a sin. It is a sin to make Molten Core a 20-man raid. Molten Core is probably the single the single most iconic 40-man raid of all time. Molten Core is the 40-man raid. And they cut it in half. They cut it in half. They cut my boy in half. Improvements, with many non-set items also getting a hefty overhaul as well. Okay. Lastly, all right. we are excited to announce that Who's we will that be having a Thank scalable you. difficulty system in Molten Core. Allowing yep. players to turn up the heat inside and face. I think I think they should not have done this. They should have just gone with the with the season of mastery changes. They should have just copy pasted the psalm changes and not had one one difficulty, the psalm difficulty, and not had three difficulties. And who even knows what that means? Ever growing challenges. Some aspects of this system were visible on the PTR. And we've enjoyed listening to speculation and, most okay. importantly, your comments and feedback around okay. this new difficulty system and the potential reward structure. As we've been listening... 11 bosses, they added a boss, there's only 10 bosses normally. Is that even true? Molten Core, loose... Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. Yeah, what? Yeah, true. Yeah, I think, I think my brother Tyrone is right. What the fuck? What if I count from the bottom up, though? Is it going to be different? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it's the same. Okay. Do you think they fucked up? Or do you think they added another, another boss? Did they add a new boss? Or did they fuck up? Do you think they, add, they think they added a new boss? It does say 11 bosses. He, ver he verbally said it, and they typed it. Listening to this feedback, we've wanted to let you know that raising the heat level will not affect the quality of rewards. The quality will remain consistent as the difficulty goes up. Instead, it will increase the quantity of rewards. Cringe. Lame. Who gives a fuck? Plus L. Making some of the more valuable drops in the raid appear more often. In general, we don't want to heavily gate the best quality gear behind high difficulty content in Season of Discovery. As we really just don't think- Aaron the Meister! The Hyperborean. the Hyperborean boss. If there's a Hyperborean boss in Molten Core, I refuse to kill him. I will go up and I will kneel. I will kneel. I refuse. Hyperborean blood must not be spilt. But if you do want to push yourself, you will find additional challenges and perhaps be able to gear up a tiny bit faster. Anixia's okay. layer has also seen some significant loot overhauls as well. And while Anixia has misplaced her stockpile of tier two helms, she is gonna have plenty of juicy loot for you to chase in its place. Juicy loot. We're also taking a new approach for raid size with Anixia, as she will ultimately be tuned to be completed with 20 players, but the allowable raid size is up to 40 players. This is like this is such like a who cares thing. Like why not why not just make her a twenty man? You don't like why, like why why would they even waste a bullet point on this? Like like either either have her be this or have her be that. You know what I mean? Okay, whatever. We love forty player rating, but we think it ultimately works best as a soda and pretzels type of content. In other words, the same level of difficulty you come to expect from classic. So if you are forming a pickup group and want to ensure quick success, you can bring 40 players. But if you are running with your guild... But only for Anixia and not Molten Core. Like, okay, if, okay, this logic is fine. Okay, okay, I, okay, that's, you've got a thought process. But then why would you only have cool that be the case? On your task. Why would you only have that be the case for Anixia, which is a one boss raid, and not Molten Core, which is a 10, maybe 11 boss raid? Why would you not apply that equally to all of the content? Uh, Math, hey, good morning. You know, we've done that in the past, actually. Thank you, bro. 20 players may make more sense to maximize your rewards. World bosses have had an interesting history in World of Warcraft, particularly in early yeah. versions of WoW, where they yeah. were hotly contested and created flashpoints for 
let's say, interesting player interactions. While we love this intense competition in Classic 2019, one drawback to the content is that due to its limited availability, it tended to be content that most players never got to That's meaningfully true. interact with. We aim to make it a okay. bit more accessible in Season of Discovery by instancing the content off and handling it similarly to what we just discussed with Anixia. The raids mm -hmm. will be tuned for 20, but can be done with up to 40 players to make it okay. friendly to both organized groups and pickup groups. Related okay. to these changes, and to talk all things loot, I'll turn it over I have an incredibly unpopular take here. I don't care about this. I, I, I actually don't give one fuck about this change. I'm going to be honest. The critique of world bosses being that only the top 0.1% of players ever got to interact with a world boss, period. Meaning 99.9% .9 of players never... Like, world bosses don't exist for 99 or 99.9% .9 of players. This is a, If this is a way to bring world bosses um, to, the, to the masses, like, I, I, don't, I don't really care. Like, like whatever I don't know it's not it's not like it's not like world bosses okay as as someone that has killed a lot of world bosses it's not like it's even fun or epic content 99% of the time anyway most of the time it's not some epic world pvp battle it's not some you know struggle back and forth between the top guilds it's like we have our summoning alts and we logged in 30 seconds before you and we got our raid in and out and we killed the boss before anyone else even showed up at at three in the morning it's not it's not really that epic most of the time. I don't like I don't know, whatever. Whatever. Related to whatever. these changes, and to talk all things loot, I'll turn it over to our lead engineer on classic, Nora Valletta. Take it away, Nora. Thanks, okay. Clay. We're excited to share some of the cool new loot you'll find in phase four of Season of Discovery. First, let's check out some of the new dungeon loot you'll find in phase four. We've got Iron Foe, which has had its level increased to 58 and now grants 18 attack power when equipped. Next, we've got Idol of Exsanguination, which causes your Lacerate Ticks to energize you for 5 Rage. Wow. Totem of the Plains reduces the cast time of your Healing Rain spell by 100%. Taking inspiration from players using the three-piece set in Sunken Temple for Shamans, we wow. thought it might feel bad to completely lose that set bonus as an option, Having it be a totem you can swap on and off for fights made a lot of sense here. Burst wow. of Knowledge has had its item level increased to 58, its spell power increased, and its active cooldown reduced from 15 minutes down to 5 minutes. Finally, wow. we've got Librum of Holy Alacrity, which causes Holy Shock to reduce the Everyone cast time wow. of your next two Holy Lights by wow. 0.2 seconds. Our classic Tier 0 Dungeon and Tier 0.5 Dungeon upgrade sets have seen a full overhaul as well. In original WoW, a basic dungeon set wow. of eight items dropped in max level dungeons, and an epic quest chain was introduced in later patches to upgrade those items into a That's higher right. quality version of that set. That's right. In Season of Discovery, this is still true, but the upgrade quest chain will be available right at the launch of Phase 4, and each class is now able to choose between multiple dungeon upgrade set items that accommodate multiple class specializations as they move through the quest chain. While you will have to choose That's which right. variation of each set you want during the quest line, the other variants will be obtainable via gold and other means once the quest chain is complete, so you will have access to every set for your class if you want to Has anyone here grinded the entire tier 0 0.5 uh, tier set? This entire dungeon set? Tier 0 0.5. It actually takes a long time. Like, this is actually a lot of content. This, like, like them um, re-itemizing Tier 0 0.5 is actually probably the singus, single biggest piece of content they have added to Phase 4. Because now, like, everyone wants to do it. It takes a lot of time. Most people normally didn't do it. And now you're going to have a good reason to do it. And it, and it. and it is, like, a big time investment and gold investment. Let's talk about the gold investment. It is quite expensive to get all eight pieces. And from looking at these set bonuses, a lot of classes are gonna wanna have all eight pieces. It's gonna be a lot of gold. It's gonna be a lot of gold. I could see players saying, listen, I want this gear. I wanna do the, I wanna do the quest chain. I don't wanna spend 800 gold and I'm gonna quit. Like, like the necessity, almost, like, I don't wanna say requiring, but heavily incentivizing people to do this might, actually backfire because it is a huge gold sink it could be a it could be a bad play maybe this should make it cheaper to to accomplish or something i don't know try them we'll all see. these sets were testable on the ptr and we've had a blast watching people get excited about both the new stats mm. and appearances of these sets as well but what about raid loot here's a quick look at a few of the items from molten core 
First up, Ooh. we've got an awesome looking elemental shaman shield called Earth and Fire. Looks similar to the rank 14 PvP shield, but with a distinct new color variation. Oh, We've wow. got Magmadar's right and left claw, which allow you to summon core hounds to aid you in combat. Oh, the wow. three set bonus actually allows you to transform into Magmadar for a brief period of time. Oh, but how about wow. Faithbringer, a two handed paladin weapon for healing? Oh, or Key wow. to the City? A caster staff from oh, Elixir. Wow. Finally, Obsidian Edgeblade, which has been changed from wow. a plus eight to two handed swords to a plus three. We've added 1% crit with those stats and made it oh, just wow. a tad slower. Our dungeon sets won't be the only color variations you'll see in phase four. Here are some of the cool tier one color variations we've got coming soon. Oh, wow. Next, why don't we spend a few minutes talking about world events? The Blood okay. Moon is not seeing any major adjustments for phase four and will not be a vector for new items or player power. No but it new will items. continue to happen on its normal timer. We wanted to mention this okay. because we are nearing level 60, which means that players will soon have access to the highest level PvP rewards and many players will be ranking up to get them. Yeah. In order to help with the honor gain process, we're introducing do you guys think they should have added some new rewards to this event? I think I think they should have done something. Like they should have put something on this, right? Probably. Introducing a new Blood Moon currency in Phase Four. When the new currency is introduced, oh. Bloodstained Commendations will have had their cost reduced from one silver coin to twenty-five copper coins. Okay. We envision Blood Moon carrying on as an evergreen supplement to the normal PvP honor ranking process. If you'd like to interrupt your BG queues for a bit of quick chaotic world PvP, my favorite, you and your group can venture into Stranglethorn Vale during the Blood Moon and supplement your honor farm. Okay. Next. We're making some significant adjustments to Nightmare Incursions, shifting oh, wow. the mission quests over to a simpler daily quest format. We really okay. love the overall theming of Nightmare Incursions, but think these adjustments will help make them feel like an optional supplement to normal leveling, rather than the be-all, end-all leveling activity for all new characters. As a result of this format change, we are also uh -huh. planning to tone down the difficulty of some of the creatures within Nightmare Incursions to make these okay. quests a bit more solo friendly. The experience gained from these activities will cap out at level 53 as well, but the quests will remain available through level 60. Oh, beyond 53, you don't even get XP from these daily quests. Should you desire to earn a reputation. Okay. Overall, we learned a lot of great lessons for Nightmare Incursions, which we plan on carrying forward for any potential future events. Yeah. And speaking of future events, for Phase 4's outdoor event, we've taken a few of the lessons learned from previous events and are applying them to a new, more lightweight outdoor event, the Black Rock Eruption. This okay. event will occur every two hours and see additional spawns, daily quest content, opportunities for reputation gain, and increased honor rewards from World PvP. Outside of Black Rock Mountain, the forces of the Fire Lord are wreaking havoc. Join the Thorium Brotherhood in repelling these attacks with new daily quests to help grow oh, your wow. reputation with the Thorium Brotherhood and earn quicker access to powerful crafting recipes and other rewards. Inside the mountain, you'll find your blood is running extra hot, causing you to gain bonus honor only within the mountain itself. As Ooh. for reputation, we are adding brand new upgraded versions of the existing <clears throat> crafted rewards from Thorium Brotherhood, Argent Dawn, Timber Maw Hold, and Hydraxian Water Lords. We've also got some okay, really cool sense. for fun items that allow you to teleport to Ajara, lay a fire resist. This is huge. The beacon of Hydraxis, it's underneath my webcam right now. Every two hours, you can teleport to uh, the Hydraxian guys in Ashara. Okay, that's huge. That's a big item. Duke's domain. Area of effect that your allies can stand in or turn you into a water elemental. You'll be able to place these for fun oh. items on your key ring, saving you some valuable bag space. Anyways, oh. I've got some rep to farm, so I'm going to go ahead and pass things off to our senior producer, Josh Greenfield, who will be happy to share some of our upcoming systems updates. Oh, wow. Thanks, Nora. Going into phase four, we've made a few significant system updates we're excited to share. First up, we took a lot of the lessons we've learned from the Wild Offerings currency and have expanded on that system with a new deterministic currency we're calling Tarnished Undermine Reals. Okay. You can start earning these coins from most non-rare spawn dungeon bosses over level 55, and each boss will drop a single currency for each player in the group once per day per boss. This currency can be used to purchase a variety- Once per day per boss if the boss is over level 55. Okay. Variety of things such as rare crafting recipes, crafting materials. So, so, so now what this means is like, you have you have a daily quest to go into every fifty-five plus dungeon, effectively, right? You, yeah, you you do a fifty-five plus dungeon world tour every day. 
because you want to get this currency. Powerful gear, as well as a variety of other valuable items. Yeah. We've gotten a lot of feedback from players asking for ways to keep dungeon content relevant longer, and this is one way we're looking at keeping dungeon runs feeling rewarding at level 60. We're also yeah. particularly excited what, what about can you buy a brand new feature to World of Warcraft Classic, a twice weekly raid lockout system. One bit of feedback we uh, got early on was that three day lockouts on raids was difficult for guild leaders to manage due to the inconsistency that? of when reset days occur. What's up in Sunken that? Temple, we moved the lockout to weekly to add a bit more stability, but we always wanted to revisit this to see if there was a way for us to provide the increased cadence and content availability that the three day lockout What's provided, that? but with a bit more stability and predictability to help with better raid planning. The twice okay. weekly lockout accomplishes this by having raids using this lockout interval reset twice a week on static reset days. For example, in North America, twice weekly raid. Wait a minute, wait, how, okay, am I retarded? How is this different than a three day? Wait, wait, how is this different than just how it was in phase one? Watch the video, am, am I being retarded? Raids okay, I'm will reset okay. on Tuesday and Saturday mornings. We plan to okay. use this lockout interval for all of the raids in phase four. We feel that with the pace of Season of Discovery, this is a great step forward to allow you to raid more if you choose to. At this point, we're approaching the home stretch, but we do Okay, hold up, hold up. Am I, am I being a retarded person? Rewind. I can do each raid twice per week. Could I clear it and then like reset and then do it again immediately? No? Okay, okay. So the difference between this and the three-day lockouts, the three-day lockout in phase one was not tied to the calendar week. So it's three days, three days, three days, three days, three days, and it ch it changes. Sometimes you have a lockout on a Monday. Sometimes you have a lockout reset on a Tuesday. This the reset is always going to be on a Tuesday and always going to be on a Saturday. Okay, wow, that's a huge difference. That's crazy. At this mm. point, we're approaching the home stretch, but we do have a few more updates to share before we close things out. With phase four and the increase to level sixty, players will begin having access to max level world buff effects. In Season of Discovery, oh, wow. we're also planning to add an alliance equivalent to Warchief's Blessing, the Might of Stormwind. As fun as it was oh, to skulk around wow. the crossroads on our alliance characters, hoping for a kindly priest to- What do you want to bet? Hold up, no, hear me out. What do you want to bet? Might of Stormwind and Warchief's Blessing stacks. And so still, <laughs> you're going to get both of them. Now, you need to get both of them. Oh, oh, I'm blo bro, it says right there. It says right there. Okay, that would, dude, that would have been so fucking funny, though. That would have been so funny. Hoping for a kindly priest to mind control us for a chance at War nope. Chief's Blessing, this should make getting your world buffs a bit less cumbersome for Alliance players. As with previous phases, Discoverer's Delight will continue to function from 50 to 59, providing a 50% experience you, Thank boost you, bro. in that level range. We've learned a lot of great lessons about leveling, and while we want you to level a little bit faster, there's a lot of content in the 50 to 60 range, and we don't want to totally trivialize the journey in phase four. So having a more nominal buff from 50 to 59 mm. makes sense. Characters from 1 through 49 will still enjoy 150% experience increase as well, so it should be super easy to get those alts caught up. Like previous level up raids, Sunken Temple will give a generous amount of XP, so running that- So, real quick, I think like for the for the average gamer, one level in the 50 to 60 range takes like probably four hours. Okay, so 40 hours. Four hours times 10, 10 levels you need to get, 40 hours, but- you're gonna do it 50% faster. So what are we talking, 30 hours for the average gamer? Are we talking 30 hours for the average gamer? They're speeding it up and then, and then two thirds. No, what is it? Okay, hold up. It's, uh, it's uh, what is that, like fucking 27? 27 hours or something like that ballpark? And then if you're faster, four hour levels are like kind of slow, but that is average. If you're a speed leveler, it's gonna be, I don't know. 20 hours, probably something like that. That while you're leveling could give you a good bump as well. In phase four, we plan to allow blacksmiths and leather workers to swap their profession specs for a nominal cost. This will not quite be ready for the launch of phase four, but we do plan to introduce it a short time later. Perhaps okay. most excitingly, we've done major overhauls to many iconic in-game crafting recipes with oh. dozens of recipes replaced or given a method to upgrade into each do you remember before Sod came out, they said that we were gonna have like a really, really cool new like class, uh, sorry, like profession specialization system where if you went armorsmith or swordsmith, it was gonna be fucking awesome, right? Did they ever do that? 
I don't th I don't think they ever really did that, did they? Like it's it's all it's all just still fucking lame. Okay. Even better versions of their original crafted items. First up, we've got the refined Hammer of the Titans, a two oh, wow. mace with 2.0 speed that has a very hefty amount of feral attack power. It also oh. retains its classic three second stun proc, which will now proc in druid forms. And who could forget the iconic Arcanite Reaper, newly upgraded and refined into oh. a 4.0 speed powerhouse with improved stats and a very fancy new classicified glow. These are just two examples mm. out of many iconic crafting recipes to receive major glow ups in phase four. So get out there and get crafting. Looking to the raid mm. release schedule, in a departure from previous phases, we've decided to space out the unlock of raid content following launch. Azragos and Kazakh will go live one week after launch, with Molten Core and Onyxia the week after that. <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking funny. Oh, that is a good one. Don't go too fast. Don't have too much fun. Hey, slow down. Don't go too fast. You need to slow down. Phase four is going two weeks. Okay, to be clear, it's going to take people 25 hours to go from 50 to 60. You have a, you have a big time XP bonus. You can't, <laughs> you can't even zone into Molten Core for two weeks. I guess that gives us all, all the time in the world to get our entire eight-piece dungeon set. We all get our eight-piece dungeon set going to have a ton of compelling things to do right at 60 with a lot of new and improved loot to chase. We think that this pre-raid gearing phase is one of the best parts about hitting level 60 on a fresh character and giving that pre-raid best in slot process a bit of time to breathe and giving you some worthwhile goals to accomplish ahead of the raids becoming available is very exciting. Should provide you- You mean you don't want to level nine characters? I would rather put my ball sack in a blender than even play two characters in sod. I'm just going to play one character. With a lot of great, That's satisfying it. gear progression leading up to those raids becoming available. With that, we are done with today's presentation. We appreciate your patience as we're working diligently Thank to you. get Phase 4 into your hands. We really appreciate all of the participation in our recent PTR releases, and we continue to consume your feedback as we're finishing things up for Phase 4. As always, the WoW Classic development team is incredibly grateful for your support. Thank you for playing with us and thank you for your feedback and participating and helping us develop this season. We'll see you again when Season of Discovery Phase 4 goes live on July 11th, 2024. Thank you. And Hell goodbye. yeah. There it is. No, I think I think this is uh, like generally going to be fine. I think all of us are going to have a fuck ton of fun playing this phase for three weeks, maybe four weeks. And then after the three, maybe four week mark, I think it's going to probably fall off pretty hard. But no, listen, it is, it is, it is true. Um, being a fresh 60 and doing all the previous farming, and now you're doing all of the tier 0 0.5 stuff. Everyone is doing all the tier 0 0.5 stuff. That is, that is fun. That is fun to do. That is fun. That is content. And then you have a week, maybe two of doing the molten core stuff. Maybe on the hardest multicore difficulty, you have like a week of prog or two weeks of prog on the hardest difficulty. So yeah, I think I think you I think you have three or four weeks of guaranteed just like just just pure fun. You don't you don't have to think about it. You don't have to try to have fun. You're just playing the game, having fun. You have shit to do. You're not forcing it. You're just having good old fashioned fun. After the three or four week mark, that's when maybe things are going to kind of fall off. We got to see Altrock Valley. Oh, yeah, you're only going to do Altrock Valley for two weeks. Why are you a doomer? Do you, like, do you guys think I'm a doomer? Listen, maybe you're used to streamers and YouTubers that are like soy champing. Oh, my God. Oh, it's going to be poggers. Listen, I've been playing this game for fucking 20 years, okay? I just know how this goes. Like, I'm totally realistic. I'm sitting here telling, listen, I had people typing copium in chat two minutes ago when I was saying we've got three weeks of guaranteed fun. I think we've got three weeks of guaranteed fun. I think it's going to be awesome for three weeks. And then beyond that, then it's like, okay, we'll see what's up, right? But I'm not a soy champ streamer. I'm not a bat chest streamer. I'm going to keep it real. You know why? Okay, because I respect my audience. The best thing I can do, given I respect you guys, is give you honesty. I'm about to sound like a huge dickhead. The three weeks of guaranteed fun that we are about to have in Sod Phase 4... I don't think that's a result of anything that like the classic dev team did. I think 
the two or three weeks of guaranteed fun we're about to have is just like, that's what it's like to be a fresh 60. This is the fresh 60 experience. It's prebis farming, it's dungeon set, it's getting your professions up, it's getting your epic mount. Like that, like that, that two or three weeks is always there. They did a couple little things. Okay, it's gonna be a little thing here or there, but pretty much like this is just how vanilla is. You ding 60 and you've got two or three weeks of, 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 of fun. Like that's just how it is, right? They could have made no changes going into Sod Phase 4 and still, just by nature of us hitting 60, we would have two or three weeks of guaranteed fun. Is that, is that a harsh take? Am I being a dickhead by saying that? That's the truth, I think.